display is being banished from kindergarten classrooms across the nation. This is what a quality kindergarten should look like, but unfortunately such kindergartens are few and far between. So how did play, once the distinguishing factor between kindergarten and first grade, become prohibited? More testing. In efforts to raise test scores, school administrators and teachers think sooner is better and therefore teach to the test sooner and more furiously than ever. Schools do not wait until first grade to teach the testable content. Most kindergartens across the country have learning to read as the major goal by the end of kindergarten. That used to be the goal of first grade. Forget that research shows that the average age that children learn to read is 6.5 years. Drill, 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 even if the child has no idea what it means. Of course, with all the drilling, there is no time for play or for appropriate learning that leads to long-term knowledge. Young children do not, primarily, learn through direct instruction, nor learn from skill and drill worksheets. Research on cognitive development and the brain show us that young children learn by constructing knowledge or wiring the brain in a more physical, interactive way involving all the senses. We early childhood educators call these interactions with the real world play. In order to interact in this real world environment, not the environment of paper and pencil task, children must be active and out of their seats. Of course, then one must ask the question, why are kindergarten children sitting in desk all day long? The rate of learning varies greatly among children. In fact, the younger the child, the more variance there is in rates of development and learning, and this is completely normal. This means some children will learn to read at age 4.5, and some children will learn to read at age 7 or older. This is all normal. The early reader is not a better student than the later reader. Research shows that by the end of third grade, early readers do not have an advantage over later readers. With all this push to raise test scores, there is no time for play, not learning through play or even time for recess. However, play is how children learn, and play in and of itself has many benefits for the child. A five-year-old needs activities designed for how a five-year-old learns, not for how a ten-year-old learns. In schools where children engage in more playful opportunities, for learning, we see children as active learners, not passive learners. This is a good thing. We see the whole child developing, that is, the physical, social, emotional, and cognitive child. Why teach just the brain when the social, emotional, and physical child needs to grow too? And in schools with a learning through play philosophy, we see an integrated curricula where learning is not segregated into discrete little compartments like math being separated from social studies, science being separated from math, and the almighty queen reading, standing alone as an instructional block dominating the day and the curriculum. But more importantly, we see the following characteristics being nurtured and developed in a play-oriented classroom. Discovery, inquiry, problem solving, cooperation, persistence, oral language, and creativity. In addition, in the play-oriented classrooms, research shows there is less stress, less behavior problems, more motivation, and interestingly enough, higher test scores. Why is this? Because children were more actively engaged and learned more through play. Here is a beautiful example of children learning through outdoor play. Whoa! 
the matter is that we are leaving the technology age. We're learning only isolated factoids of information is enough. We are entering a new era, a knowledge age in which integrating information is key for survival and success, where creativity and problem solving is paramount. The consequence for society in eliminating or promoting childhood play is huge. Do we raise robots who can regurgitate facts and pass tests? Or do we raise thinkers and problem solvers who are creative and cooperative? The challenge is to balance between the desire to teach academics sooner rather than later and obsession with test scores with the need to foster play as the foundation for learning skills like collaboration, communication, content, creative innovation, and confidence. Parents and educators as the spokespeople for young children need to hold our education system accountable for understanding that children learn from play and in fact learn through play the very skills that will make them successful in this changing 21st century global society.